Donald Sindon is the son of a chemist, dispensing, not industrial, and was brought up in Sussex. His education was interrupted by serious illness, and at the age of 15, he left school and became an apprentice joiner, hoping to become a draftsman. He then had little interest in the theatre. Fate, however, intervened in the form of a cousin who persuaded Sindon to take his place in an amateur production in Brighton. Donald took to acting and was spotted by a director of the Theatre Royal Brighton, who ran a wartime touring company. For the duration of the war, Donald Sindon worked as an apprentice joiner by day and performed for the armed forces by night. He spent the last year of the war with the Entertainment's National Service Association, ENSA, usually known as Every Night Something Awful, <laughs> touring liberated Europe and India. On his return to England, Donald Sindon worked a six-month season in Leicester, performing a different play every week with only Sundays off. Each Sunday, he would come to this hall for concerts, sitting in the one shilling stage seats, about where the organist is now. He has described a, a splendid technique to persuade performers to give an encore, but you will have to read his autobiography, A Touch of the Memoirs, to discover what it is. After Leicester, he spent two years with the Shakespeare Memorial Company, near the Royal Shakespeare Company, at Stratford, and later acted with the Bristol Old Vic Company, acquiring experience of a wide variety of plays. Donald Sindon was contracted to the rank organization for most of the 1950s, <coughs> and appeared in many British films during that time. His film career took off when he was cast as Lieutenant Lockhart, first lieutenant of the Corvette Compass Rose, in Ealing Films' superb version of The Cruel Sea in 1953. This was probably his finest film role. One critic thought that the role was a major plum for such a young actor, although the 30-year-old Donald Sindon was actually much older than most of the Corvette lieutenants would have been. As an aside, so Compass Rose was a fictional flower-class corvette serving in the North Atlantic. One actual ship of this class was noted for having a crew that were involved in far more fights ashore than any other. This was possibly because their cap bands were inscribed HMS Pansy. Donald Sindon returned to the Royal Shakespeare Company in 1963 and remained with them for the next 20 years. His performances in 1963 and 1964 as the Duke of York in Peter Hall's production of The Wars of the Roses showed him to be an outstanding classical actor, marked out by his musical verse speaking and deeply resonant characterization. Other successes soon followed. In 1969, he played Malvolio in Twelfth Night, a role that gave special scope to his skill for character-driven comedy. Uh, Professor Stanley Wells has described his performance as that of a comic genius. The second volume of Sindon's autobiography, Laughter in the Second Act, describes how he based the look of his Malvolio on Graham Sutherland's portrait of Somerset Maugham. Not a pretty sight. His performance in King Lear in 1976-1977 was reckoned as amongst the finest of his generation. It won him the Variety Club Stave at Stage Actor Award for 1976 and the Evening Standard Best Actor Award in 1977. Perhaps uniquely, this great Shakespearean has also shone in farce. To succeed in King Lear and in Move Over Darling in the same year implies a remarkable versatility. In 1990, Donald Sindon presented a one-man show as Oscar Wilde. He himself is believed to be the last surviving person to have met and befriended Lord Alfred Douglas, the catalyst of Wilde's imprisonment, who lived in Sussex towards the end of his life. Donald Sindon's reading of The Ballad of Reading Jail was issued in 2002 on a CD produced and directed by his son Mark. He has always had a keen interest in theatre history. This resulted in the creation of the British Theatre Museum Association 
of which he was chairman between 1971 and 1977. This became the Theatre Museum and is now part of the Victoria and Albert Museum. He is also vice president of the Henry Irving Society and was extremely supportive of the conference on Irving that was held at this university last weekend. Donald Sindon received the CBE in 1979 and was appointed to the Arts Council in 1982. Those of you with very long memories may remember his regular proxy appearance in the satirical public puppet show Spitting Image as an ageing actor always pestering the Queen for a knighthood. <laughs> the knighthood was conferred without pestering in 1997. Today we are proud to honour Sir Donald Sindon and I hope we did not charge him a shilling for his seat on this stage today. Mr Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and Council, I present Sir Donald Sindon that you may confer on him the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters. I give you the degree of Doctor of Letters and welcome you among us and congratulate you on the occasion for you. Thank you so much. I say, that's better, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, and uh, Professor German, thank you for those very kind words. Would you please send them to the Times? They can do for my obituary. <laughs> uh, actually, it's a very strange job being an actor, you know. In the last three weeks, I've been asked to address the Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, the Ex-Prisoners Association, and a gay lib demonstration. And this afternoon, I'm rather worried. <laughs> I'm wondering how many of those present are listening to me for the fourth time. <laughs> uh, oh, you, never, you never know, do you? Actually, I have a long association with Leicester. As Professor German said, I was in the repertory company at the old Theatre Royal for just under a year, and I had the opportunity of appearing in 47 plays in that one year, which is quite an experience, really. Uh, and more recently, I've been the chairman of the Leicester Association for Music and the Arts. I've been the chairman for 15 years. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we raise money to distribute to uh, schools throughout Leicestershire uh, who are in need of uh, a stage, lighting, instruments for the orchestra. So uh, there might be a collection on your way out. Uh, I am indeed honored to receive this degree. Uh, it's quite extraordinary, because I left school when I was 15, and uh, I've been sweating away as an actor for the last 63 years. So uh, may I say there's hope for you all. <laughs> Stick at it for 63 years and you might get one of these. You know. uh, for this occasion, uh, I'm, not only am I thrilled at getting it from this university, but especially from Leicester, because uh, any university that has Professor Richard Fuchs as head of the English department deserves my grateful thanks. I mean, how lucky you all are. Uh, I'm only allowed 30 minutes, uh, but uh, just for the Chancellor's benefit, I need to tell you that quite recently I was in Canada and I was taking around uh, a Native American reservation and the chief was telling me how difficult it was to provide a succession to the chieftainship. He said, when I married my first score, I went out, I killed a lion. I skinned the lion, and from the hide I made a bed. I put my score on the bed. Result, one son. So when I married my second score, this time I went out, I killed a buffalo. I skinned the buffalo, and from the hide I made a bed. I put my score on the bed. Result, one son. So when I married my third score, this time 
I killed a hippopotamus. I skinned the hippopotamus from the hide. I made a bed. I put my score on the bed. Result, two sons. Which proves, he said, that the score on the hippopotamus is equal to the sum of the scores on the other two hides. I do apologize, that just shows you my level of my sense of humor. <laughs> but I am, I, may I congratulate all of you who've worked away for years to get your degree, and I, lucky bounder that I am, I've got one for nothing. <laughs> and thank you very, very much indeed to the Senate, and indeed, goodbye and thank you so much.